Electrophilic addition is a reaction that happens with alkenes. Remember, alkenes are very reactive due to their carbon-carbon double bond. Have a look at ethene, for example. Ethene has a formula C2H4, and between the two carbons, we have a double covalent bond, which contains a total of four electrons. Each covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. Because of that, there's a lot of negative charge in a small space. Remember, electrons are negatively charged, so we can say that there's a high electron density around that double bond. A lot of negative, ch negative charge packed into a small space. And this makes alkenes reactive. And we're going to have a look at one of those reactions now. So let's take ethene as an example again and see what happens if it reacts with a molecule of hydrogen bromide, or HBr. Now remember, hydrogen bromide is a polar molecule. Why? Because bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so it has a delta minus on the bromine. That causes the delta plus hydrogen to be attracted to the high electron density of the carbon-carbon double bond, and we're going to form a bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. Remember, the curly arrow shows a movement of an electron pair, so we're forming a bond between the carbon and hydrogen, breaking the bond between the hydrogen and bromine. Let's have a look at what we form. So remember, that hydrogen is now bonded to the first carbon, so that first carbon has three hydrogens around it, but there's only two hydrogens on the second right-hand carbon. Okay, so we draw a positive charge on that. We give this species a special name. It's called a carbocation intermediate. Cation, remember, is a positively charged ion, and carbo means the carbon has a positive charge. It's an intermediate because it's a species that exists partway through a reaction. There's also a bromide ion, which was formed when the HBr bond broke. Both those electrons went onto the bromine. That bromide attacks a delta sorry, the positively charged carbon, forming a bond to it. And that results in a molecule of bromoethane being formed. But we can also use bromine. Bromine, um, as a halogen, in, in when it's dissolved in water, has a kind of brown and yellow color. And if we pour it onto some alkene, the, the color is, is decolorized. It goes clear. Um, so the, the bromine can be used as a test for that carbon-carbon double bond in an alkene. Now, bromine is symmetrical. It's not a polar molecule. It's nonpolar. But the negative charge of that carbon-carbon double bond affects the electron cloud around bromine. Remember, opposite charges attract, but like charges repel. So we've got a negatively charged electron cloud around bromine and a le high electron density in the negative bond. So we get some repulsion of that electron cloud. The electrons literally get pushed away towards that second bromine, and that induces a dipole. So we have an induced dipole where it's delta minus on the further carbon, delta plus on the carbon closer to the double bond. That means that we've got a site that can be attacked now. So the um, mechanism's very much the same as the first one. The, one of the double bonds breaks um, and uh, attacks the bromine, and then the bromine-bromine bond breaks, and we form that carbocation intermediate. So remember, we're joining that first bromine atom to the carbon, so we'll pop it in there. And that second carbon still only has two hydrogens attached, left with a positive charge. And again, we have a carbocation intermediate. When that bromine-bromine bond broke, we were left with a bromide ion. And that bromide ion has an electron pair that attacks a delta plus, opposite charges attract, and then we form a new molecule, this time 1,2-dibromoethane. So we've gone from an alkene to a haloalkane.